In this video, we're going to stack our sample DSLR astro imaging data from the Google Drive folder with a Deep Sky Stacker. So here I've downloaded the sample DSLR astro imaging data zip file from the Google Drive link for which I will uh, I'll include in the comments for this video and the first thing to do is unzip it. How you do that may depend on what zip software you have in, in Windows. Um, I have WinRAR and also 7-zip but uh, I'm just gonna extract it to a folder of the same name amount of data in this folder and so that created this folder here and in here we have M81 and M82 bias darks lights let's take a look at the readme Okay, this folder contains all the lights and calibration frames, no flats. You need to stack and process a DLSR image of M81 and M82. So these are raw files. We have seven lights, we have 13 darks and 15 bias files. They're all from my Canon T3i, imaged from Scotts Valley, California. So for Deep Sky Stacker, in order for the T3i raw files to be properly converted, you need to use this, it's called a beta version. There hasn't been any new versions of Deep Sky Stacker in a long time, but the link for that is right here in the readme file. And then there's also some example files in the folder of what our output might look like. Let's just take a quick look here. So there's what, what I ended up with after processing in Photoshop. So this is M81 on the left, M82 on the right. So there's a comment here that, of course, you know, the more data that you collect, the more hours you have sub exposure for, the better your image is going to look. But you know, the purpose of this was just to get you some data to experiment with and that is known to, to properly stack in, in Deep Sky Stacker. The other thing is that, you know, I've skipped flats and the purpose of flats is to remove uh, vignetting at the edges of your picture and also if you have any dust or other defects in your optical train, uh, it helps take those out. I have found that a lot of times Deep Sky Stacker does really strange things and I don't understand why and it turns out to be something about the flats. So I recommend for now when you're just starting out to skip flats and get everything else in your workflow working uh, before you, you worry about flats and then if you do have a strange problem and by strange problems, I mean where your picture comes out sort of like abstract art, where parts of it look like it's folded in three dimensions over the other part, or weird curves in the data, or repeated data. Chances are something to do with your flats, and if you stack it without flats, that hopefully will go away. So that's why I didn't include any flats in this. Okay, so that's the README file. So let's open Deep Sky Stacker. Again, I have all my Astro programs in one file here in a folder on the desktop called Astro. Uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Okay, again, I will point out that this is version 3.3.4, which you need uh, to properly 
used the raw files from my Canon T3i. Now, I'll show in a later part of this video, my normal workflow is to use something called Dark Master to match up darks from my dark library with the lights for any given uh, object. But for this demonstration, I just want to show working with this data that I provided in the, the download in the zip file. Example DSLR data, so we're just going to be working with that. So rather than open a file list, which we would be doing from Dark Master, we will just open the individual files. Right. So the first thing we'll do is, uh, is open our lights. So we click on, the, click on that top link and my folder is in downloads, sample DSLR imaging data, M81 and M82 lights, and there they are. So I'm going to select them all. That's control A, um, or you could shift click or control click or whatever is your favorite shortcut for that. Okay, so there they are, and then we'll go and get the darks, and again, we need to go for this project to downloads, and the dark files, control A, open, some bias files, offset slash bias files, downloads, bias, control A, all right, so if you look here, now we have Our lights and we can check all so our lights are in there and they're checked you may want to you know when you're working with your own data look at these one at a time by clicking clicking on them and this at the top here will turn blue when it's loaded and then you can select the ones you want or don't want based on tight round stars or you know satellites or whatever before you just check them all but these I know are all good so we've checked them all so you've got your lights we've got our darks and then here's the offsets and bias and they're all in this main group again later when we're using dark master we'll have one or more groups of like temperature lights and darks and then the bias and if you had flats they would all go in the in the main group but you know right now this we're not using groups so that group is empty all right let's look at some settings before we do anything else here this is what i want the raw settings for raw files i suggest you start by selecting this adaptive homogeneity as the best way to do your converting your color bare files into regular RGB. So I just recommend that as the default and then the rest of it we'll look at in a minute here. So we start by saying register the checked picture. So what registering does is line them all up. If you look you may have noticed when we were loading these that the image shifted a little bit. That may be the one that was already loaded. There, did you see that image jump? Let me do it again. I'll pick another one. Watch. See it'll move a little bit. Very little that time. Okay, so that's because these images are dithered. And so dithering is a method of, of getting rid of noise that's in the same place on your sensor every time by dithering the image and then lining it back up. You can eliminate that noise that, that didn't move. So the first step is to do registered 
and we come over here to the advanced tab and we compute the number of detected stars. So we're going to want at least 50, somewhere between 50 and two or 300 is what we want. So 94, so that's pretty good. If, it, if you wanted more, you know, you would move this to the left. Sometimes it'll, if you're too close to 50, you know, some of your pictures won't have enough and they won't get selected for stacking, so it's probably better to have more than less. 116, we can try that. Okay, and then while I'm on this tab, I click the recommended settings, and the ones in green are ones that are already selected, and the ones that are in blue are, one, are optional ones that you need to think about. So we're using AHD to bearing because this is a color image. Uh, reset all white balance settings. Super pixel mode we're not using. This would be if we were processing narrow band images. This is a one shot color. Um, so the other choice here is median versus average. I use median and then we have a small number of bias and, and dark so it's suggesting the median method for those for this stack and then this one this is a toggle this or this I always use per channel background and calibration okay so we've selected all our defaults and now we can just say okay and it's going to go through and make a master bias or offset and a master dark and then it will proceed to do the stacking. Now this program is um, multi-threaded so the more CPU cores that you have the faster this will go. One thing you probably don't want to do is, because of that, is run this while you're doing image capture uh, um, because you can eat up all your, your CPU power and then uh, your downloads from your image capture could time out, uh, which I learned the hard way. There is a setting in here somewhere to have low priority on some of those other threads and that will prevent that problem from happening. So now it's doing the registering. You can hear my fan speeding up because it's doing a lot of intense uh, work on the CPU. Last one. Okay. So you can see now it's filled in some of these columns for our lights. Uh, this first is what Deep Sky Stacker thinks is the score of the individual frames and the score is a, a combination of how many stars it was seen and how round they are and many uh, factors. So you can use that to decide whether you want to include or exclude uh, a particular image in a stack. The full width half maximum is the uh, how tight and round your, your stars are. A smaller number is better. Around a value of two is about the best you're gonna get at average uh, amateur locations. Uh, the scene apparently wasn't super great. It must have been some water vapor or something in the air when I took these, so they're, they're around seven or eight. Here's the number of stars in each frame and then the sky background percentage. Again, lower is better. And these are the offsets due to dithering and if you had a meridian flip, the angle would be, you know, 180. And these are still empty because that gets computed in the next step, which you can either do yourself by doing compute offsets here or it happens automatically if you just jump to stack check pictures. Let's just go ahead and 
compute the offsets just because we're talking about it. 